Okay, welcome back everyone. Been a little bit since we've done a video, so I figured I'd hop on here while I'm making up some of these stiff rig double hook sets and show you guys how to make these yourself at home for pennies on the dollar. I'll be doing seven knots today, six inch length, just standard hook sets. You can also do an inverted rear hook if you wanted to run them like that. And of course, single hook, depending on where you're fishing, what you're fishing for, and what lure you're putting it on. Real easy to do. Uh, not complicated at all. And I'm not just going to show you guys how to make them. I am going to walk you through and tell you where to get everything you need to do it. That way you're not scratching your head wondering what size shrink tube is he using? What cable? What crimps? You know, it can get confusing. So I'll just break it all down for you. And we'll start with that. The cable. Get it right on Amazon. This is a 280 pound test cable. Okay. And what you're going to type in is 364 of an inch, 7x7 seven seven stainless steel cable. 280 pounds. And you'll get... You'll find rolls like this. Very inexpensive. Literally put together thousands of hooks. So that's your cable. 280 pound test. 7 by 7. 364 inch. Stainless steel. You either want a 304 stainless. Or a 316 stainless is even better. As far as the shrink tube. For these 7 aught size hooks. You're going to want a 316 size. Okay, if you're doing an 8 or a 9 aught, you need to bump it up to 5 sixteenths. Again, you get this right off Amazon. It's sold by Lynx, L-I-N-C-Z, right off the Amazon site. These are 20 one-foot strips, and you can get it in half black, half red, all red, or all black. Again, very inexpensive, and what's good about this is it's a three times shrink. So it's going to shrink three times smaller than its starting size. It also has an adhesive inside of it. Let me see if I can show that. So when you heat this up, if you look on the tail end of this, you see that glue in there. It's like a hot melt glue. And it melts, and I mean, it makes these hard. You cannot, I mean, you can, you are not twisting that. I mean, it hardens up like an epoxy in there or something. By far the best stuff I found right here. Like I said, it's sold by Lynx, L I N C Z in all caps, right off the Amazon site. 3 sixteenths for 7 aught, 6 aught hooks, and 5 sixteenths for your 8 and 9 aught hooks. As far as crimps, for this 280 pound cable, you want a 1.4 millimeter. I love these long crimps from Catch All Tackle. They're about twice as long as a normal crimp and allows me to crimp it on the forward end and the back end with a spot in the middle that's not crimped. Essentially making it like two crimps only via one crimp. Okay, if you're going to bump it up to the 480 pound cable, you're going to need a 1.8 millimeter crimp. <coughs> Our hooks. I really like these Mustad Oshagasis. That's a 3407DT, uh, 7 aughts what we're using today. You can get them from Bass Pro Shops. Catch All probably has them a bunch of places. Using my standard pen crimpers, which I was using these to cut the cable when I first started making this, but I've been cutting so much of it that I kind of wore them out. And what I ended up ordering was these big old crescents. I didn't know it was this big when I ordered it. But, I mean, it cuts that cable like butter, you guys. I mean, no frayed ends. Just a good, clean cut every time. I mean, it matters. It, it's not fraying the end of that cable out on me at all when you cut it. It's a very good cut. But, anyway, let's get into whipping one of these up. Show you guys how to do this. I'm going to get a couple hooks out. What I do is normally pull off three or four feet of cable. I've just got a small piece left here because I've been whipping them up. So I'm just going to use that. But you want it longer than what you need so you can pull it. And you'll see why once we get going here. Just get a 
couple crimps out. Okay. And now what I've done is I've made myself a little jig here. And I get the back of them hooks right on my lines there. Let me zoom in and show this to you guys. Okay. I've got a couple lines. You notice it says regular long version. My regular is a 6 inch. The long version would be an 8 inch. We're just going to make the 6 today. Real simple. Now to start this, we're going to grab our cable and one hook. Okay, I am going to come down through this eyelet and stick out enough cable for this crimp to grab. Okay, and I can't get it right tight back to the eye. It's about an eighth inch from it, so just gauge it on that. Right there is what, about what you want sticking through from the eye. I've got that crimp backed up to the eye. You can see it's about eh, eighth inch long, longer than the crimp itself. Okay, and then we're simply going to take this. We're going to wrap it around the hook. Okay, just like that. And then we're going to come around and go up through right here. Making sure you don't catch one of your uh, wire strands and unravel the wire on you. Can be a little tricky. Get it started. Okay, and pull it up to that point there. And now it gets a little tricky. What I've got, okay, is I've got my little vise down here. It's actually for tying flies. But I'll just put that bend of the hook around it. So it gives me something to hold so I can pull this. Okay, and help pull up on the shank of the hook with your finger to push that cable as you pull it tight. And it don't want to bunch up on you, it just comes through nice. Okay, and then that's what you've got. She's all wrapped right around that shank. Really good. Twist the wire back, it's a little messed up. Now we're gonna take, pinching it here so we don't lose it, we'll get a crimp started down on your long tag end. Like so. Okay, and then we're gonna pinch both of these together about the same. You don't wanna be trying to push the bottom way up or that top one way down, it just makes it hard. Okay, and get your crimp started on there. And then work it around so your cable is coming straight off that shank of that hook. Okay, we don't want it doing one of them numbers. We want it nice and straight. And the easiest way to do it is to just get your crimps on here. And then use your crimps to pull that up. Okay, I'm going to make my crimp right there. Which you guys can see, I'm kind of towards the back. I just made a good crimp near the back. And you can see my cable is just sticking out a tad bit. And we're going to come right up to that front end. And crimp it down again. And now you'll see what I was saying about a double crimp. And what a short crimp does when you try to crimp it on both ends is you squeeze this end down and it wants to open the other end. You go back and squeeze this, it opens this end. These don't do that. It's giving me a nice, good crimp, left the center, relaxed. That ain't going nowhere. That's how I like to do that. I'm sorry about that little kick there. So now we're going to come in, put it back on the jig. Grab a Sharpie. Let me zoom you guys in for this part here. Try to spin that paper around. Okay. Getting them on there. And now I'm going to mark this cable with the Sharpie right at the eyelet. Okay, I'm going to move that hook. And then I'm just going to twirl it so I mark it all the way around so I'm not searching trying to find it when I uh, go to do this next step. Okay, so you can see I got a black mark all the way around there. So now what we got to do so we take our back chunk of 
shrink tube. We're going to get it slid on here before this next part. Okay, and that's going to come down over all this stuff. And we just leave that sitting there like that for now. Now we're going to grab another crimp, slide it down on here. And this is important too. Look at your hook in which way that eye is being bent around. Okay, and you want your wire your cable rather, to come around that same way. If I was doing it this way, when you lay it over the top, it just don't mate together as good. Okay, so you want it to kind of go the same way as that other eye does. I'm going to draw this back to my mark, keeping my hook straight in line, and I'm kind of going to pre-bend this cable around a little bit. That way it has less of a tendency to twist on me, when I feed it back through to make my loop here. You see it's kind of working against me. I got it in there backwards that time, but I got to come and not let it flip around on my bend. There, I got it now. Okay. And like I said, keep that loop in line with that hook. We don't want this hook being sideways and our loop flat up. You just do that by holding the crimp and twisting the shank of the hook until it lines up right. And there's that. Okay, I want to tighten that up just a little bit more. Grab my crimps. One up front. One in the back. Okay. And that's what we've got. Now we'll cut this off. Get my big old cutters up here. a quick snip you guys see how good that cuts just like butter okay well there's that we'll lay it down and check that it's straight everything looks good there so now what we're going to do is take our second piece of shrink we've actually got two different lengths the front piece is a little bit longer work the eye of your hook up through that and you want this length to be so it just stops where that shank starts to bend down. If you go way back on the bend, if you cut this shrink tube too long, it's going to create that cable to go it down, which you don't want. So you want it just where the shank is straight, not, not any more than that. And then we're going to take this loop, and we're going to push it up through that shrink on top of the shank of the hook. So this is what we end up with. We end up with our loop right over the top of that eyelet of this hook. Okay, and now when we heat this, we need to make sure that that cable is laying perfectly on top of that and let it harden up before we do anything else. So that's the next step. We'll bring in the old heat gun. Let me rearrange my camera for you guys. I like to do I've got these little pair of uh, hemostats here that I'll stick in there to help me hold it so I'm not burning my fingers Get it in the heat, making sure that cable stays on top, like I told you. 
It's especially why I like this stuff. You really got to get it hot to melt that glue inside, but man, don't it hold them good. They will not twist or do anything on you. Lick your fingers and just kind of position it and the, the saliva on your fingers will cool that down and help set it into place. Okay, now we'll come and hit our back one. And I just heat it, like I say, keep heating until you see that clear glue start coming out the back end of that. Okay, you see that glue coming out of there? And there you have it. There's your tandem double setup trolling hook. And as you can see, if this back hook is just a little crooked, once it all uh, cools off and hardens up good, just hold it and pull and twist it the way you need to go. Okay? And you'll get it to line right up perfect. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Throw it up here on the pile. And you guys can just keep whipping these up. That's a inverted. It's got an inverted back hook on it. Okay, and then we have a single. Real good. Real good hooks. You can put a, you can rig them up on a ballyhoo pin rig. You can just put them right in a lure. You know, if you have a trolling lure, say you've just got an islander like this and you don't want to run a pin rig on it, go ahead and grab one of yours. Say you've got the inverted back. We just come down through this with our leader material, whether we're using a fluorocarbon or even a cable if we're fishing for toothy critters. Okay, and you can see that six inch version is about perfect on that eight inch islander. That's tucked right up in there to the front of that. And that makes a good bait. You know, whether you get a tail strike, you've got them, or whether they come in and hit up by the head, you're going to get them with that second hook. But I hope you guys enjoyed that video. And uh, look forward to doing some more for you guys. The next one I'm going to do is probably assist hooks on jigs. Uh, flat fall, butterfly, knife jigs, whatever you guys want to call them. I'll show you how to set them up, how to put the hooks on them the correct way. So you are not missing strikes, you're not losing fish, all that good stuff. But if you guys like that video, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. I'm just getting going here, literally recording these videos with my cell phone right now. But uh, once the, the channel takes off and starts gaining some ground, you know, we'll upgrade to some better equipment and do what we can. But I'm just all about trying to give you guys good, clean information, straightforward, so you can make your own stuff at home better than bought. Legit, it's better than you're going to buy it. And the satisfaction of making your own hook, catching your own bait, rigging that bait, and producing a meat fish with it, the satisfaction is, is higher. So much higher than if you just go buy a pre-rigged lure and start towing it around. In my opinion, anyway. I just prefer to do things myself, but... Thank you guys for uh, checking the video out, and remember, why buy it when you can make it yourself better than bought?